Well, hello guys yet again. This time I am doing a drawing of Danny. I was going to just go ahead and play music for this one and play some of their older stuff like When I'm Alone and things like that. And for the people who are non-warning fans, this is Daniela Villarreal from The Warning. And it is the third in my series of three of each of the sisters. So I was going to just do music on this, but I decided since it was the last one and I'm going to be redoing some that are bigger, that I would go ahead and talk about this one because it had some things that I had picked up along the way. What I just did in that first part was just transferring carbon to the drawing to lay it out. Now, the things I have to talk about in this one are a little more interesting, at least to me. What I have learned along the way from the other two, because this was the third one I did, I was applying to this one and learning new techniques as well. The other thing that I have that's a challenge in this one that I didn't have on the others is that she has blondish hair. and that afforded me some other things to learn along the way like trying to get crosshairs and things like that put onto the drawing as I was going so I use my mechanical re eraser in this one quite a bit to try and figure out how to do that didn't do great on it but I did okay now the things that I will mention uh, I this this uh, shot here, by the way, reminds me of, like, Venus. Um, some of the classic drawings you see of her standing on the shell. The face and the hair flowing out and all just has a look of Venus to me. So, anyway, I digress. Um, this will be a little more about what's coming and things like that than it will be about Danny. Uh... Although, I will say, I, I ended up getting new, another new pad of paper. Um, it's the same type of paper as this, but it is much larger because I am really wanting to do these pictures again, but this time do them on a larger scale so I can really get into the details of them. And now that I've learned so much from having done these three, I can uh, apply that to the new drawings. I also have many new techniques that I have learned along the way and some new pencils to tell you about. Now the techniques that I'm going to be doing, um, I have picked up, it's called charcoal powder, I believe it's powder. Um, it's basically ground down graphite, it, uh, sorry it's not charcoal, it's graphite powder. <laughs> It's actually used to lubricate um, gears and things and metal parts, so so that they you know stay smooth. You can also use it on guitar strings to keep them from catching in the nut on the uh, guitar, so that when you tune, you don't have to have it catching in there. Um, I will be using it quite a bit on the upcoming drawings, where I just did that by laying it out with all the pencil and then brushing it. I'm looking forward to when I do this one again I'm gonna be using a brush to basically paint on the graphite powder a little bit more to um, because uh, painting is I can't say it's my number one favorite thing with art because I'm really starting to enjoy pencil drawing again but it's going to be, a, I think I'm going to get a much better smoothness and, and foundation to work from using graphite powder. Uh, it's very, very cool. And the things I've watched to learn how to use it, uh, I may not use it exactly the way they say. I have some of my own ideas and I think I'll be able to apply them because I've had so many years um, back in the past of painting and now getting back to it uh, I'm just pretty good with brushes so I'm looking forward to that uh, 
it will be for a lot of layout. The other thing that I've gotten that I think is going to make a huge difference um, is a set of pencils that have carbon in them to give them a richer black and less shine in the really dark areas. Uh, I will throw up a picture of those posits. Here, let me just grab them and I'll tell you what they are. Isn't this just so professional hearing me get up from my chair and run over to grab these things? They are called Mars Lumograph Black. And I was watching a lot of pencil artists online say how these things have changed their lives and I cannot wait to use them. The actual next picture I'll be drawing before I start on the three of the girls again is going to be a... Well, you know what? I'm not going to say because it's going to be a surprise for somebody, and I don't want to ruin the surprise, but let's just say that the picture itself has a ton of black in it, and the background is going to be almost all black. So, whereas all of these pictures that I've done, the Paulina, the Ale, and this one, have white, you know, predominantly, and almost nothing on the background, this new one has very dramatic lighting and the background is almost totally black. So I'll be using the graphite powder to do that. Um, I hope you all don't mind too much that I'm not going into much detail on talking about Danny's picture here as I'm doing it. Uh, I, I will get more to that in a moment. But just letting you know some of the exciting things that I've been learning and along the way. Uh, it'll be interesting painting the hair in with uh, graphite powder to lay this stuff out and I think I'm going to get smoother nicer tones in the eyes see on here it's, it's a smaller picture so the leads are still I'm still not getting the, the finest details that I want on here but these are really, really good learning exercises and ended up looking quite nice. Plus, I was able to take them with me to get them signed by the morning, which you will see at the end. If you've watched the Alley video, you've already seen the video of Alley signing it. Um, and then the other one you'll see will be with Danny signing hers. So where I'm using pencil to color in these areas here, you see all the pencil strokes. I'm, I think the graphite powder that I'm going to start using is going to give me much, much smoother skin tones that then I can add texture on top with a really fine pencil to get skin texture and things where I'm not trying to smooth out a whole bunch of lines that I've put in there with a pencil. Uh, I'll be able to have that smoothness and then use the pencils to give me the texture that I need. It will work great for these kind of areas because I'll be able to paint in the lights and darks of her hair, then go in and erase some of the highlight areas and then start filling darker with uh, the other pencils and this is this these areas in here and around the eyes are where those lumograph pencils are going to be I believe exceptional um, now here it's already looking very much like Danny to me uh, I see little things now you know being away from it and coming back later that I could have done slightly differently that would have would have helped but that's the way it is with every bit of artwork you do you step away from it give it some space and suddenly you see things that you can't believe you missed which is really odd because you would think you know working on it you you get used to it and you know the 
that you'd be able to pick out more details because you're concentrating on it so hard, but stepping away is the best thing any artist can do. You step away from it. It's the same with music. I'm sure the warning would tell you this very same thing. I'm sure when they were doing their demos and going to the, getting them down and all that, you sit there and you work and you work and you work at it for days and you think, this sounds amazing now. You know, I've got it exactly where I want it. You leave it and come back in a week and it is a whole different experience because now your ears have had a chance to get rid of the prejudices that they built up during the time you were recording in the same way that artists start to get prejudices about parts of the picture that they've drawn. And then you get to hear it as if you're hearing it all new again or see it as if it's new again. And the flaws and things that are there or maybe not always flaws, but things that you feel you could have done better jump out at you. And it probably is that way in almost every aspect of life. <laughs> I just apply it more to music and art because that's what I do the most of. Um, I have the same things with my job as a retoucher. I'll retouch and think, this looks great. And then I'll go back later and go, Jesus, I did way too much on this. Because in the moment, you don't realize. Uh, I'd be curious in the comments, anybody that's run into that, let me know some of your experiences with that because I'd be curious what other places it, it applies other than just creative endeavors. Um, I've never really thought about where it would apply in just normal everyday life. Uh, I imagine cooking, it applies very much the same way. You could be seasoning and because you're seasoning in increments, you go, okay, it needs a little more salt, a little more salt, uh, just a little bit more. And then your taste buds are acclimating to the amount of salt that's there each time. But then you go back, try it a little later, and maybe you've oversalted because, you know, you were adjusting to it gradually as you went. So, yeah, let me know, let me know in the comments anything like that. Um, so... Doing blonde hair is not a fun endeavor because you're having to draw, you're not necessarily drawing your hair, the hair, you're drawing the negative spaces and the shadows that fill around blonde hair. And it can be a bit of a challenge. That's why I'm very glad I found the mechanical eraser. Uh, it's not working exactly how I wanted it to yet, only because I haven't practiced enough with it. My next drawings, I think, are going to take a step up from what these are. And if they do, I'm going to be very happy with that because I've been pretty happy with these drawings. Uh, which is not boastful. I mean, you know, I think if you feel like you're good at something, it's not boastful to say that you think it turned out good. I think you're just acknowledging the fact that you've put in the work, you've you know, done the things you needed to do to be good at something. Um, I don't think football players who say that they're great at what they do are necessarily being boastful. Some of them are. But a lot of them, they put in the work to be that. And they, they're entitled to a little bit of uh, pride in what they do. I think it's the same for art. You... If you didn't have pride in what you were doing, you would quit because you would always feel like it wasn't good enough. I, I luckily have gotten to where I know that there are always going to be people better, but there are going to be people that haven't gotten as far as I have. Um, I thought of saying worse, but that's, that's not the case. People aren't worse than me at what they're doing. They just haven't gotten the hours in and done done what they needed to do okay so here we are at the end and this is the final picture I'm going to do a little zooming in and out and moving around and there's Danny's signature at the bottom and I was so thrilled that I was able to take these to the girls and I'll put the little movie here at the end of Danny signing it 
So I will sign off here and thank you for joining me today. Bye. To, yeah. Oh if you gosh. could each sign of yours. Oh, great. Thank you, Ken. Oh my God. Okay, wait. I didn't know if you'd seen any of them. Of course I did. Look oh at that. My God. Oh my God. And he had oh the, the bags because in the photo there were not like you didn't have. I started your new one on the better paper, but I couldn't finish in time to bring it, so I brought the original one. In a specific anywhere you want. Okay, oh my God. You can just sign down in here if you want. That's amazing. Wow, it feels like I'm next. Oh my God. <laughs> yes. Like it's not a picture. Like it's a wow. Hey, pal, did you happen to see the animosity cover? I think I did. The piano one? Yes, I think I did. I okay, think I, did. I was trying to channel my inner pissed off pal. <laughs> <laughs> Mission accomplished. <laughs> wow. Awesome. That's awesome. Wow. That's amazing. Wow. Woohoo. All right. Nice Yep. Yeah. Uh,